Question number 17. A and B are two numbers. A, B. 6 times of square of B. 6 times of square of B is 540 more than the square of A. So square of A is A square plus 540 will give you 6B square. So we assume the number as A and B as per the question and then we proceeded to write this line into an equation. 6 times of square of B, 6B square is equal to 540 more than the square of A. Square of A is A square plus 540 will give you 6B square. Now we look at the second part of the question where uh, respective ratio between A and B is 3 is to 2. So A is to B is equal to 3 is to 2. So let's assume that uh, the two numbers A and B is 3x and 2x because the ratio is 3 is to 2. So we assume the numbers as 3x and 2x. Now we substitute the assumed value of A and B in the equation number 1 we already got. So it becomes 6 into 2x the whole square is equal to 3x the whole square plus 540. So that becomes 6 into 2x the whole square. 2x the whole square is 4x square. 4x square is 6, 24x square minus 3x the whole square is 9x square which becomes minus 9x square is equal to 540. So 15x square is equal to 540. x square is equal to 540 divided by 15. 15, 1, 3, 9, 0, 6. So x square is equal to 36. So x is equal to root of 36 which is uh, x is equal to 6. To find the value of b you have to find the value of 2x. 2x is 2 into 6 which is 12. Now we come to question number 18. 4 bells ring at an interval of 30 minutes, 1 hour, 1 hour and 30 minutes, 1 hour and 45 minutes. All bells rang together at 12 pm at what time they will ring again. So this is again a question based on LCM and I am leaving it to you all. Before solving the question remember to convert the timings into similar units. So it is 30 minutes, 1 hour is 60 minutes, 1 hour and 30 minutes is 60 plus 30 90 minutes and 1 hour and 45 minutes is 60 plus 45 105 minutes. So now you find the LCM of 30, 60, 90, 105 then whatever you get add it to 12 pm to find the time at which they will ring again. If you are not able to find the answer go back again to the LCM based question and do it. Question number 19. Find the greatest number that divides 71, 169, 314 leaving remainders 7, 1 and 2 respectively. The first number is 71. The remainder that we get is 7 which means we will divide up to 64. Next number is 169. The remainder is 1 which means we will divide up to 168. Next number is 314. The remainder is 2 which means we divide up to 312. I hope you understood how I got these numbers. I will explain it again after finishing the solution. So what is the next step? You have these numbers. Now you find the HCF of these set of numbers. Okay. So to find the HCF of these three numbers, 64. The number is 8 into 8, 64. The number is 8 into 8 which means 2 raised to 3 into 2 raised to 3. So 2 raised to 6. 168 can be written as 84 into 2, 42 into 4, 4, 21 into 8, 7 into 3 into 8. Okay, so we will write it as 2 raised to 3 into 3 into 7. Last number is 312 which can be written as 156 into 2. Simplifying again you get 78 into 4, 39 into 8 or 13 into 3 into 8. So it is 2 raised to 3 into 3 into 13. So now we have basically found the prime factors of these numbers. So now how to find the highest common factor. First let's look at 13. 13 is not present in 168 nor is it present in 64. So it is avoided. 3 is present in 168 but it is not present in 64 which means it is not common. 3 is also avoided. Next number 7 is present in uh, 168 but is absent in 64 and 312 again not common so avoided. The last number is 2. 2 raised to 3 is present in 312. 2 raised to 3 is present in 168 and 2 raised to 6 is present in 64 but we have only 2 raised to 3 as common so we take HCF is 2 raised to 3 or 8. So the correct answer here is option C 8. 
I hope you understood how to solve this, but let me explain it again. So we have the answer as 8. So according to the question, when you divide 71 by 8, you will go up to 64 and leave a remainder of 7. Again the same procedure for 169. 169 divided by 8, you will go up to 168, which means 8 into 21 is 168. So we will go up to 168 and we'll leave a remainder of 1. Same for 314. You divide by 8, you will go up to 312 and leave a remainder of 2. So whenever you get such a question, your thought process should be to find these set of numbers so that you can go and find the HCF and finally the answer. So now we have covered couple of questions for LCM and HCF and I hope you understood how to solve it. Out of these two, LCM is a common question. Almost any paper you take, you take civil service aptitude test or you take uh, SSC, you will definitely find one of the questions based on the theory of LCM. Question number 20, a fruit shop requires 600 strawberries per week to feed their customers. How many strawberries will it require for the month of January, February and March 2028 if the requirement of customers does not change during this period? So we know the value of strawberries required per week. Now let's calculate the number of weeks for the month of January, February and March 2028. So, so in January 2028, there will be 31 days. In February, there will be 29 days because it's a leap year. So how will you know if this is a leap year or not? 2028 divided by 4. Check whether the number is divisible by 4. If it is divisible by 4, it is a leap year. So 2028 is a leap year. So February has 29 days, then we go to March, which has again 31 days. When you add up these three, you will get 31 plus 29 is 40, 60, 60 plus 31 is 91. Each week contains 7 days, so 91 divided by 7 will give you 1, 3, 13 weeks in total. So you have the number of strawberries per week, which is 600. So for 13 weeks, it is 600 into 30. 13 to 6 is 78, 0, 0, 7800 option C is the answer. So now we have solved most of the questions that could come from number system. I hope you understood each one of them. If not, see it again and make sure you understand before moving on to the next topic. Stay safe and see you again.